Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with some more Battle Tech and my continued look at the backer beta build and the single player skirmish mode that is currently the only mode available. This video is going to start off my look at very experimental builds. Perhaps gimmicky is the proper term to use, as they are going to be built around a sim single gimmick. The, this time around, the gimmick is going to be a melee build. So all of the mechs I've chosen and all of the pilots I've chosen are geared towards that one task of being proficient in melee combat. I'm going to stay at the war budget of 25 million for this video. My opponent is just going to be a default loadout as we've seen in the past. I've chosen the heavy cavalry loadout because I don't think I've seen this one in action yet. So just to see something a little bit different. Now, as far as my loadout goes, this is actually kind of a tricky gimmick to pull off with the mechs that are currently in the game and the fact that we don't have the mech lab. If we had the mech lab, I could tailor the mechs we have to fine tune this premise, but I have to just go with what loadouts I have uh, for the mechs that I have. Also, if they were to introduce more mechs into the game, there are some mechs that have not been introduced into the game yet that would be more well suited for this style of combat. The other problem I had was just fitting things in the budget because there were some mechs that I would have actually preferred to use or variants of those mechs that I would have preferred to use, but I just couldn't fit it in the budget. So starting things off at the heaviest, I have the Battlemaster, which we've seen in action. And a lot of the stipulation of why I chose the mechs I chose is I wanted two things. First off, I wanted the mech to have some semblance of weight behind it. So the Battlemaster being an 85 ton mech is the second heaviest or maybe not the second heaviest. There might be other, well, no, I think most of the other assault mechs are at 80 tons. So it is the second heaviest mech, not quite as heavy as the Atlas. And you might say, well, the Atlas is going to be better in melee combat. And yes, it would be as far as just its pure tonnage. But the other thing that I was looking at was small weapons that we could use in addition to just punching. So the Battlemaster achieves that through the MGs. Also, the Battlemaster is a little bit more... Well, has more speed, so it can close the distance a little bit faster. So hopefully that will be uh, a strong suit for this melee build as well. And now with this build, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not going to use the weapons that I have on my mechs. But the real idea behind this build is to get into close combat uh, if and when possible. All right, our second heaviest mech is going to be the awesome. Now, I would have preferred the other build of the awesome, perhaps where the large lasers could be used at closer ranges. But with this loadout, with the PPCs, I almost am forcing myself to get in and uh, brawl with, and do melee attacks because once we get into that minimum range, PPCs stop being useful. So you pretty much are forced to do that. We do have a small laser though, so we do have a small weapon to utilize once we've closed and we can punch it out. This is an assault mech at 80 tons, so we still have a decent amount of weight behind us. Moving down to our medium mech, we have a Hunchback. Again, this mech I would have chosen a different variant than I did. Uh, the variant I would have chosen is this one here that has a lot of medium lasers. Again, I think this is maybe a better build for in-close attacks. It still has the one small laser too, which is uh, one of the big reasons why I'm choosing a Hunchback here. But again, I couldn't fit it in the budget, so I ended up having to go down to the variant with the AC-20 but I still have that small laser. And the AC-20 is still really good firepower and close. And hey, maybe this mech's a little bit more heat efficient. So we'll have to see how effective this Hunchback is. But I suspect Hunchbacks are, you know, pretty solid in this uh, realm. Maybe at a lower budget level, the Hunchback would be uh, the king of, of this style of combat. At this budget level, it's going to be falling more in the realm of the Assault Mechs. But still... We only have so much budget, budget to work with, and we want to do everything melee, so we have to do that with the Hunchback. Finally, we have the Urban Mech, which I haven't played with at all yet, mostly because I think it's patently terrible. As for a Light Mech, it does not really have great speed. It has okay durability. I mean, if you compare it to, for instance, some of the Locust variants, oh yeah, it has a little bit more durability. It's heavier, though, so that's why it can fit more armor on. But its firepower and its speed are just laughable. It does have jump jets, which make up for that a little bit, but not a big fan. But it does have a small laser, so it does fit into the gimmick. It has a small weapon that I can use in close combat. As we can see, the difference between the melee strength of these two light mechs is pretty significant. Let's try and go up to a mech that's similar weights, though. So you've got the Panther, and it's going to be hard to compare this quickly 
Panther versus the Urban Mech. So the Panther does have an advantage in weight. The Urban Mech just has that advantage and a little bit of damage from a small laser. So I'm a little iffy, uh, especially on uh, this mech being perhaps a waste of space. Now, as far as my pilots go, I focused on mechs uh, or mech pilots that have good piloting skills. So I used Mockingbird here rather than Witness. We still have the sensor lock ability, if at all it is needed. Melee combat does override a lot of the defensive traits or statuses that you can get throughout battle, so I don't know how useful Sensor Lock's going to be, but she's got decent piloting skill. Paradise has the evasive skill. Again, I don't know how much that's going to play uh, into this style of combat, but he also has decent piloting skill. Sumo has good gunnery skill, so we can use those PPCs beforehand, but he also has solid piloting skill. And finally, Blockade, I think, has the strongest piloting skill of the bunch because, hey, this is going to be the mech that a lot of things uh, fall upon. Now, unfortunately, he does have that Death From Above ability, and I don't have any jump jets. And that's one of the things that I could see. You could swap out some mechs here uh, to do the same gimmick, uh, especially if you want to focus on Death From Above tax. Uh, that's something that you could do, as a lot of the... Uh, Mech pilots that have high piloting skill end up having the ability of death from above. So at least I think that's what it's called. Or Angel of Death, technically, is what it's called. Which gives you extra ability to do death from above. Gives you some extra jumping distance. Technically, the urban mech could possibly be a viable choice there. You know what? Let's uh, switch in Showboat. I just said I didn't think uh, Sensor Lock would be viable. This is the one mech that has jump jets on all of my mechs. So hey, why don't we do that? So that's going to be the one change I make. As far as their mechs, we have a Shadowhawk, two Griffins, so pretty medium heavy here, and finally a Victor as their assault. I'm going to be playing uh, Alpine River because I can't remember the last time I did this map. If at all, I've done it in my YouTube videos, so let's just do it for something for the sake of difference. Because I can't remember it, I don't really remember whether we'll have a train advantage or a disadvantage. So it's going to cause me to have to improvise a little bit more and put a little bit more pressure on me. But this is a build I'm definitely excited for. I think there's a lot of potential in going uh, this route. But again, I think we would be better served with possibly different mechs once they introduce more mechs into the game. And once the mech lab comes around, we could really fine tune our mechs to be more suitable for this style of combat. Really, the main thing I would do is I'd focus on a lot of smaller weapons if you're going to be uh, doing this style of combat. More particularly, yeah, see the sprint range of, a, of an urban mech. More particularly, I would aim for a mech like the Charger if they introduced it. It's an 80 ton mech, at least I think it's 80 tons, so the light end of an assault mech. It's got good speed for an assault mech, and the only weaponry it has is a number of small lasers, so that could be really powerful for this kind of build, because, I mean, it's almost like you're forced to do this kind of combat, you come in and do melee attacks, so... That would be a mech that I think would be favored for this style of combat. Unfortunately, it's not something that's in the game, so we're going to have to do without it. Okay, I'll go ahead and put my awesome right here. So our Battlemaster and uh, our Hunchback are going to be our main melee attackers, as they're the ones that have the higher speed to close with the enemy. So, hopefully we can do that. And as we close, we'll use the weapons that we have, and then we'll engage and melee. Okay, so we didn't get any sensor contact. Normally, I would have my light mech much further up, but <laughs> you can only move so far with a urban mech. All right, I'm trying to think, how could we use the train to our advantage? So there's a river in the middle. Some train we may be able to hide behind over here. And we have a forest over here that we may be able to take advantage of. So I think we take the hunchback down that route because we can use the hunchback's evasive through paradise if I'm doing normal moves. 
and the battle master we take in this area and probably take the awesome in there with them so i'm gonna go ahead and take showboat to follow the hunchback to give him a little bit of support now with our enemy they have no light max so i'm not like it's not like i can do a melee attack against a, an equivalent lighter mech and try and brawl it out I think Showboat's going to be quite a bit at a disadvantage. Okay, so the Hunchback, I almost forgot, is supposed to go this way. Now, one downside of the loadout I did is not very many of my pilots have good... What do you need? ...tactics. I, I'm actually forgetting what the name of the stat is. The, the stat that gives you good line of sight, which I, I believe is tactics. I'm some reason I'm blanking on what it's called, but point being, that is one of the downsides. So we're not going to have great line of sights here. So it's possible the enemy will see me f well before I see them. Big problem for the awesome is just going to be its uh, lack of, of speed. But so far, it's outrunning our, our urban mech. I cannot highlight enough how much I hate the urban mech. <laughs> okay, we do have, finally have sensor contact, so over here. So it's good that we brought our Battlemaster over here. Okay, so most of their mechs are going to be going in phase three. So we're going to be mostly responding to their movements. All right, let's start with Showboat. What can I do for you? So sprinting here. As we do want to close in, if at all possible. Now, I can use the jump jets after this turn to jump down from this ridge. Maybe speed things along. I don't think the urban mech has to worry too much about heat for the most part. So, we could probably liberally use the jump jets. Alright. Now, our hunchback... I think at this uh, point, we just go ahead and sprint. I don't see a reason why not. We're not going to be able to see anyone anyway. And we can get into the woods here and get our evasive going. So, do we want to go here and get into the woods? Or do we want to go a little bit deeper into the woods? Eh, we want to we wanna close in on these guys. So, let's just go in the woods here. Alright, now we're going to see all their medium mechs go. Now, it might have been to my advantage to wait, because they might might get uh, vision on my hunchback here and start firing, and if we hadn't moved, it's possible we would have avoided that damage. Okay, so they have line of sight for sure now. We can establish line of sight if we move here. Which... I think I'd prefer to do... Let's move Blockade first, because Blockade's going to have a hard time getting a line of sight of any type. So, let's go ahead and sprint. As the, I don't see... If you, if you can't get a line of sight, I don't see another, re, you know, another move to do here. I mean, technically, I could get line of sight by moving there. But I think we just move... I, I wonder with this, are you going to get heated up by stepping on that? Possibly. Maybe the smartest move is to run this way. Question is, can we jump down, though? So if we can't get down, then that would be an unsmart move. All right, well, I think we move to just get close to these guys. So I'm going to go ahead, move here. For some reason, I'm not getting any line of sight. I guess the train is such that perhaps it's hilly enough that we're not getting line of sight. But it's possible my opponent sees me, so we'll have to see. So far, no fire coming from them. They still have one mech to go, but uh, the victor shouldn't have any long-range weapons, so... I think I do move to get that established line of sight. And uh, fire off some shots here. The Awesome's going to have a hard time closing with the enemy. That's going to be the one downside of the Awesome. 
Let's go ahead and fire off our PPCs. I don't think there's a reason to hold off at this point as the end intention is to close in and do melee combat. And by then, I'm hoping we can just, you know, not have to worry about the heat too much. I mean, everything does heat to a certain extent, so you have to worry about it a little bit, but let's just go ahead and fire here. All right, we managed to hit with one. <laughs> I mean, he had evasive, but hey, we're firing, they're not, so. Okay, we're back around to the top of the order. I figure we might as well just reserve Showboat. No point in risking her in a situation where we may be able to do attack without reprisal. Oh, I, I missed this. This is why that we couldn't see them. There's a ridge of, ro of rock right here. All right, so they did sling some shots at our battle master. Okay, we're not going to get great vision here regardless of how I move. And we have evasive and cover. I honestly think this is going to be the best defense we have right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and reserve again. Let's jump these guys. Okay, so he's literally going to jump. Okay, we dodged most of that. Oh, interesting. He heated himself up quite a bit. Okay, and they're going to go after my Battlemaster and whiff. All right, well, I'll take that. Okay, now we've known these guys have gone. The victor's over here. Only one left to go, and more than likely he won't be able to close enough to really do anything. So, we can do a melee attack here, which is really the whole point of what we are we <laughs> we are doing. Now, one thing I, I haven't really figured out is supposedly you can choose where you want to move for your melee attack. I think how you do it is you click, and then you click another spot if it will allow you. Unfortunately... It won't allow me, but I'm just going to go ahead and engage this guy in close combat. It's going to override his, his cover. We can see that. This guy is uh, overheating, so maybe we can knock him down or something. Now, our chance to hit him in melee is only 55%, and uh, then we have the 60% small laser uh, shot. But if I do not do that, let's just say I stay still. My chance to hit is 55 and 60. So really nothing's changing here. The only thing that's really changing is whether or not I'm going to be using that AC-20 and the medium lasers that I have available. So let's just go ahead and do this melee attack because we're trying to have fun here. We're trying to do this gimmicky build. I don't know if it's a good idea, but we're going to we're going to go for it. We did manage to hit, so that was good luck. And we made him unsteady. And then we hit him with the uh, small laser too. So that was some pretty good stuff. Now again gonna be the victor going so I'm gonna jump here because we can get in visual range of these guys and I think I'm gonna try and get in close if I can so we'll jump right there Now, as far as who I'm going to gauge here, it might make more sense to go after the Griffin, but as we can see here, my chance is 50%, and then they've got cover, which is going to reduce the damage. On the other hand, we could attack the Shadow Shadowhawk, which has no cover and is right out in the middle of the river. So, I think we go for that. It's only going to be a 70% chance to hit, which, unfortunately, we missed. But that's okay. It was a shot worth taking. Now, we are exposing our Light Mech to fire here, but oh well. Okay, I think we have Sumo go first. And we want to close with these guys, so let's start moving towards that. Because ideally, we'd want to get in and start punching again. Or punching with a different mech. 
So I think we go after the Shadowhawk here. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to fire off all three PPCs without heating myself off. Up, so I'm going to fire two. Okay, we hit him with both. Okay, now it's Blockade's turn. We can't quite get close enough to get into melee just yet. I think we get into cover. And we go after the Shadowhawk. Again, the Griffin might seem like the better target, but the Griffin is going to more than likely recover before I can do anything, so knocking uh, the Griffin over isn't going to do a whole lot for us. And the Shadowhawk is literally just standing here waiting to get smacked. So I'm going to turn the PPC off, That's and everything else I think we can fire just fine. So let's just fire that off. All right. So we're back to the top of the order. I hear ya. Now I can move into cover and continue to shoot at the Shadowhawk, or I could jump, get a little bit closer. Can't quite shoot the Griffin in the back. But I think it is worth trying to flank this griffin. So let's jump here. And we'll use that AC-10 against the Shadowhawk. Now, I might have been worth waiting before I attack or I moved. But in that case, I'm out in the open versus I'm in cover. This is the better move. Move now. And again, we're having a much better chance to hit against the Shadowhawk. So let's fire. That time we hit. And we've already stripped the armor from the Shadowhawk, so... So far, this is a pretty effective attack that we've got going. And we did split up their forces. Not as much as we've done in the past, but... And that cover helped us re reduce that a little bit. Okay, so it's gonna be Paradise's turn again. We can go for another melee attack, or we could go into the river and melee attack this guy. We would give the Griffin our back, which is not ideal. This is not a great chance to hit, though, but I figure we go for it before the Griffin gets to go. The other alternative that I could do, as I said, uh, I could just wait, and more than likely the Griffin will go if I wait, and we just deal with whatever happens after that. The possibility of the Griffin flanking me is high, though. So let's just go ahead and engage here. I still think that's a better move, though. Is waiting. Because if we knock the Griffin over, that will only matter for... Yeah, because he'll just stand up. I think we just wait. We'll reserve. I think that's the right move. They might be able to get behind the Hunchback, which would be devastating, but... No, he just jumped away, and he's too hot to do anything else. The Shadowhawk's gonna run and hit the Hunchback here. Hunchback's in cover, so... It's not gonna do extreme damage. Okay, so at this point... The Hunchback cannot engage anyone in close combat. But one thing I will note is I did not get evasive when I attacked in there. So that's something to keep in mind for the future. I think we close the distance, but we don't necessarily engage just now. And the reason I'm not going to is because that would be my hunchback versus their entire force. So we're going to look to knock the Shadowhawk down. Now we have evasive too, so that's going to be very powerful for us. I don't see a reason why not to fire everything we have here. It's not a great chance to hit, but it's something. Good to go. And if we hit with the AC-20, which we just did, it's going to be really devastating. Blew his arm right off. Okay. So that Griffin, or Shadowhawk actually, is not f feeling very good. <laughs> and I don't think that Griffin's going to live long. Uh, because he just jumped right into the midst of my... Uh, my formation here. What's up, Commander? So as much as I could spank the Shadowhawk here with my PPCs and probably kill him, I think we go for the Griffin attack 
perhaps. Let's see what we've got as far as chance to hit. Yeah, you know what? This isn't too bad. Let's go for it. And we would uh, ignore his his guard. As a matter of fact, we would break his guard for our friends. This will also give our awesome a chance to cool off. So, and you can do this without giving anybody his back. So, boom. And then here comes the precision striked small laser. Okay, so we've broken his guard. Now all he has is just normal cover. All right, finally we have Blockade, who can't really get in to do anything to the Griffin. I do have to worry about giving the Griffin my back, though. And if I go after the Griffin, I have to worry about giving other people my back. I don't really want to give everybody line of sight to me without also getting some kind of advantage like cover. So I'm going to face like this, just... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to give that Griffin my back regardless of what I do here. So we'll just move right in there. And we'll hope to close with these guys in the future. All right, I'm going to turn off some of the medium lasers. And we'll fire this stuff off. Still a good chance to hit. And we managed to kill him. So that works for me. Unfortunately, it wasn't in melee combat, which is my real goal here. Okay, so now it's Showboat's turn. And Showboat can do a melee attack. I'm actually not sure. Can you get the small laser attack if you do a death from above? Because I don't know, I'm going to do it. Uh, death from above are usually not a particularly good idea, uh, you know, because it does do damage to yourself. Unless it, you want to be flashy, like Showboat perhaps does. Or, you know, it's a desperation, a move. Like, you want to do a lot of damage and your mech's kind of screwed up anyway. Death from above. But we're going to do it just to have a little bit of fun here. So, our chance to hit is not great. But, hey, why not? It does look like we get the small laser attack, so... We did manage to hit. Here comes a small laser, which was a miss, unfortunately. But the important bit did land. At least I, I think it did. Okay, aiming at the back of my urban mech. Which did heavy, heavy damage. I kind of suspected when I saw that... Uh, Griffin move that it was going to do that. I think it was pretty pretty obvious it was going to do that. Alright, we got to close with these guys, and I think now is the time to do it. Uh, more than likely, the Hunchback is going to eat whatever the Victor is going to throw our way, but that's okay. We are going to have evasive, so we'll be able to mitigate some of the damage. As a matter of fact, this might even be the better move because we get a little bit closer in here. And the water will cool us off, so not that I don't... I don't think the Hunchback needs it that bad. Okay, we're going to fire everything here. I see no reason why not. Okay, big damage to the knee there. Okay, the Griffin's just going to jump away again. Ugh. Okay. Well. We engage these guys in some long range shots. And also close on the Griffin at the same time. Now we might be giving the Griffin our back, but... If we do that, perhaps we'll be okay. Then I'll sling some shots the uh, Griffin's way. So, heat-wise, we can afford all three PPC shots. Let's go ahead and fire them. Alright, pretty good damage. Here comes the victor. Now, if he moves in close enough... 
Now, that's not a back hit, so it's not going to be quite as devastating. But I think our urban mechs just went down. <laughs> and probably, if we want to make sure that uh, that pilot survives, we should probably back out of this combat. Okay, well, unfortunately... I'm not going to be able to engage in close combat, but as we close in here, the chance that we'll be able to pull it off increases. And we're also getting into the water, which is going to help us cool down quite a bit. So as it is, it looks like we could sling all of our weapons except the PPC and still run fairly cool. So let's just annihilate this griffin, probably killing him. Oh, not quite, but pretty devastating damage there. And he's going to go down, which the Hunchback may be able to take advantage of it. Granted, uh, their Griffin might go before he gets a chance. So we'll just have to see about that. All right. So I think the idea here is just to survive with our urban mech. So I'm going to jump away, try and break line of sight, if at all possible. And then we'll just brace. Okay, no surprise there, Griffin's gonna get up. And jump to get behind us. Good move. Missed and dodging a lot of that. Though, as evasive does not care whether you're behind or not, that's one thing that's powerful about evasive. Guarded, it does matter if you flank, but evasive, not so much. Speaking of evasive, their victor has evasive, so that's interesting. All right, well, Reporting. I'm still going to punch your ass. It does give uh, the hunchbacks back to the victor, but we do that, and then we click this space. I'm hoping we'll move there and, and engage. Let's see if we did that right. So if that was right, we should move here. Yep, looks like it. we did it right. So when you can move into an alternate spot, that's how you do it. It will show you which uh, of the spaces you can move to, and you just click on that, and then that's how you do a melee attack. We did manage to avoid the back attack here. All right, let's see if uh, Sumo can get in there. Yep, he can. So let's go in and punch this guy. I don't want to move to the alternate space. I think we'll just go with the normal uh, straight-on attack here. Our chance to hit is 100%. I'm hoping we kill the Griffin, although the Griffin hasn't taken a lot of damage to the center torso, which is really where we need to hit. Okay, well, there's some damage to the center torso. But he's still standing. Here comes the victor. Gonna attack my hunchback. I'm not really surprised with that. I think he missed with the AC-20, though. Okay, our light mech. Oh, I'm sorry, our battle master. Well, you, you walked right up to me, so... You give me no choice but to punch you. I believe punches ignore evasive. Yeah, we can see the evasive is blinking on and off. That's going to be the only way that we'd be able to really hit this guy with any certainty. Uh, we do have 90% chance to hit with the machine guns, 100% with the melee, so let's get in there. Good damage. And it looks like the machine guns also ignored the evasive, so... That's good to know. Okay. I think we jump here again. And... This may be foolhardy, as this griffin may just kill me. But, I'm gonna go for... An attack on the Griffin. We only have a small laser at this point, so it's not going to do a lot of damage, but we might be able to get in for another melee attack, too. Ooh, down goes the arm. I'm assuming that the Griffin doesn't have a lot of weaponry left, and it's an LRM-5, which does not too great in close like that. Okay, so the Griffin is just going to go guarded, which it's fine for me. I just punch him again and ignore that guard. 100% chance to hit. We want to hit the little legs at this stage. Which 
Well, I'll take that hit, too. We've got a good chance of killing this guy from taking his legs out. Okay, Griffin's going to jump back. Use the LRM-5s at close range. Still managed to hit, despite the range. All right, uh, let's move Sumo here and just punch him again. Chance to hit is not great. I want to move here, though. So far, we've gotten lucky with the punches. But the Griffin's still managing to hang with us. He's going to go down, though. Okay. Ooh, is he going to get a back attack on our Battlemaster? No, he's going for the Hunchback. Well, I guess that makes sense. A lot of damage there. Managed to blow both of his arms off. Okay. Now it's Blockade's turn, which you just gave me your back. So, we're going to engage here. And we're going to engage from this tile, so we're for sure engaging the back. Okay. Here comes the machine guns. Managed to blow off. That was a lucky, a really lucky attack there. Because if we had hit him anywhere else, he would have still had that arm. Alright, well, we made him pay sufficiently for attacking our hunchback. Now it's time for Showboat to do her thing. So, can we jump on him? No, but we can get close. So we just jump over here and take our small laser shot on the center torso. See if we can kill him. Eh, did a crit. Okay, their griffin's gonna get up. And run away. Alright, well now we've got a tricky proposition. What makes it tricky is we have two mechs here, and, uh... We have, like, none of our weapons left, because our... All of our torso locations have gone away. If I wait... For the enemy... Well, the, this griffin's gonna go, so... Let's just go ahead and engage... Managed to kill one of his legs. Which is for sure going to knock him down. Griffin's still there, though. These griffins are being stubborn. <laughs> okay, so we will be able to move before... the victor gets to go. He's going to go in for a melee. Which is going to knock me down. I don't know if we're going to make it out with our Hunchback. Okay. I think we just stomp the Victor while he's down. And... We do not get a cold attack, though, with melee. So, downed opponents... You don't get to do that, but... It's still going to be a nice... Attack here for us. Where we get to stomp on him. And then machine gun him. So now this guy's going to be able to get up and just, uh, unfortunately do a ton of damage to our hunchback who's down. Unless he decides to do something different here. What is he going to do? He's going to get behind... Oh, okay. He's still going to get the back shot. Wow, surprising. Hunchback did not go down. Alright. Now our last pilot to go... ...is just going to continue the assault on this griffin. Hopefully finally killing it. Boom. 
The small laser doesn't even matter in that instance. All right, well, our awesome is pretty much fresh. Okay, there's nothing really I can do with the urban mech. Let's just have her jump out so she doesn't die. Needlessly. As my objective is to come through with as many of my mechs as I possibly can. And that's fine. Okay, another melee attack on our hunchback. Which, I think that's all she wrote. Now, honestly, I don't know if I'm doing strategically the right thing, but... What do you need? I'm doing the fun thing, you know, by, <laughs> by brawling here. Okay, so... Interestingly enough, the melee attack, when he was on his back, on his... On the ground, the victor, it attacked his front armor. So that's something that maybe isn't as consistent as I would like. Now we are going to give this griffin our back, but I don't think it has really many weapons to threaten us with. So we'll just go ahead and engage. Move into position. There goes his other arm. Okay, so we have taken out, I think, almost all of the weapons that this Victor has to offer. Which it looks like the Victor is just going to run away from us at this stage. Okay, so Sumer has two options now. We can attack the back of this mech, or we can come in and... Well, we can't actually get to the Victor uh, and finish it off. So why don't we just go ahead and do this move? 100% chance to hit with both. Granted, we are attacking fresh armor now. But we did manage to just kill him anyway. Okay, showboat's turn. And showboat jump into a position to do anything? No, so... Why don't we just go ahead and have her just brace? I don't think this Victor's going to do anything to her. So the Victor's going to get a chance to go. And all he does is spin in a circle and then do nothing. <laughs> all right, so we'll have Sumo start this off. And I don't really care where he moves. This is fine. I'm there. So yeah, the victor has no weapons. He could be doing melee attacks against me, so that could be a little bit of a problem with the AI. Okay, and then... Blockade, come in and do the same thing from his back. And I suspect a dead duck here. All right, well, that actually went decently. I wasn't 100% sure of how this loadout would do. And I took more risks than were logical. With that hunchback, I wouldn't have done a lot of those moves I did if I were doing anything else other than a very gimmicky build and a very uh, gimmicky play style. If I was just playing to play, I more than likely would not have given his back to opponents. I would have been using his AC-20 and his, other, his normal firepower more frequently. The same thing is true with some of our other mechs. But there were actually a lot of circumstances where the melee attack was to our advantage. Because we were able to remove guarded states. We were able to remove evasive states. So this is where the melee fighting can be really an advantage to you. Especially if you build your mechs around it. I think not only does the weight play a part in how effective you can be. I think also the small weapons can be effective here too. Which I think I've demonstrated all of the mechs that we used had small weapons. So every time we were able to do a melee attack we could then follow that up with a small weapon attack or two in the case of the Battlemaster. So I, I think this was a very interesting loadout. I would like to see more capability added into the game, either through new mechs being added in, mechs like the Charger that I mentioned, or the mech lab itself where we could tailor our mechs for this style of build. I'm not really sure how to speak of this as far as the balance goes. Because I'd have to see that level of build in the game, something that's very focused on melee, to see its place in the game. 
before I could determine if the game perhaps needs some balance changes and as far as that goes. But in any case, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.